This coffee roaster is both programmable and manually adjustable by touch panel. The Roast Master can tailor the temperature and roasting time to influence flavor, acidity, and other characteristics. To shape the roast chamber, workers feed a sheet of stainless steel through a sheet metal roll. The roast chamber is the drum in which the beans roast by convection heat. A paddle inside moves the beans around so that they roast evenly. The next step is to weld the rolled sheet into a cylinder. Then they grind and polish the welds until they're flat, smooth and shiny. They make the cooling tray in a similar way, but with a support band welded to the top. The cooling tray is the drum into which the hot beans drop when they exit the roast chamber. Stirring arms circulate the beans as a fan draws air through the tray to cool them. Certain parts are cut from a stainless steel sheet. Stainless steel is the ideal material, not only because it's stylish, but also because it's durable and corrosion resistant. This computer-guided laser cutter is slicing out a safety component called the heat shield, which prevents the roast master from accidentally touching a hot surface. The heat shield, like many other parts cut from stainless steel sheets, has to be formed to a very precise shape. Workers bend angles and curves into the metal with a press brake. Another component, the trier, lets you draw a sample of beans during roasting. A craftsman constructs the trier by welding various smaller parts to a piece of stainless steel tube, then meticulously grinding and polishing the welds until they're smooth. This high-pressure water jet cutter also cuts parts from stainless steel sheets. This component is one of six flights, part of the paddle that lifts and mixes the beans inside the roast chamber so that they roast evenly. To form the flights to the required shape, a worker curves them one at a time in a press. The welder places all the paddle components into a specialized fixture, which positions them correctly. First, he aligns the spokes to the paddle shaft. Then he welds them in place. He positions the flights, clamps them securely, and welds them on. The combination of inner and outer flights lifts the beans into the airflow, ensuring they roast evenly. A custom-designed grinding machine hones the flights to produce a clearance of mere millimeters between the edge of the paddle and the wall of the roast chamber. This ensures the paddle is wide enough to pick up every last coffee bean without touching the wall while rotating. Once they install the paddle, they close up the roast chamber with a faceplate. Alignment pins ensure the faceplate is properly positioned. The paddle shaft protrudes through a bearing in the faceplate. The assembly team uses a hoist to lift the heavy chamber and position it on top of the coffee roaster's stainless steel support frame. They install the heat shield that was cut by the laser cutter and bent to shape in the press brake. On top, they mount the machine's funnel-shaped hopper. It feeds the unroasted coffee beans to the roast chamber below. Thankfully, you don't have to climb up to the hopper lugging a heavy bag of beans. The hopper's lid has a tube which connects to a vacuum system that draws the coffee beans up through a plastic hose. On the front of the roasting chamber, they hang a hinged discharge door that has a viewing window. They plug in a sensor that measures the temperature of the beans in the roasting chamber and sends that information to the machine's computer. More to come after this coffee break. <laughs>